And to be totally honest with you, I definitely have had moments out of everything where like this subject, I'm just like, <sighs> kind of sucks. I cannot believe that I have a tomorrow, a five month old. I'm five months postpartum. When did this happen? What? What is time? When I was pregnant, I did a video called 12 changes or 12 things. What is it? I'll put it right here. I'll link it down below. Check it out. It's kind of the first volume of this. And I'm also going to link below a video called This Is My Body After Pregnancy. I made it like really postpartum a few months ago. So you can get an idea of the story of transformation because I don't repeat myself. This video is gonna be all the things that changed in my body after pregnancy. But if you've already seen all those and you're just here for the tea, then I am always here to share that real tea the honest truth. I'll stop rambling, let's hop in. Number one, and this is brand new for me, I just <laughs> discovered I've had this and I've probably had it for a while and just didn't even notice until now, it is the umbilical hernia. Now, like everything in pregnancy, this may affect some people and some people may never go through life needing to know what this is. It isn't a super rare thing. When I brought it up in my IG stories, I had a good amount of people DM me saying that they went through the same thing and a lot of people just live with it until they're done having kids and do minimal workouts and some go ahead and get surgery. I don't know what I'm going to do. My vague idea is that it is a tear in my abdominal wall and a little bit of my intestines <laughs> is poking through. It sounds scarier than it is and no, I'm not in any pain, don't worry, there's just a slightly heebie-jeebie factor for me and I do go in for a pap in like I think a week so I'll bring it up to my OB then and I'll see what she says but I think I just live with it. Number two for all you ladies who grew up in the OOs and decided to get a belly button piercing this is for us. I got my belly button pierced when I was 16 so over a decade I've had that bad boy in. I took it out probably two or three months into my pregnancy just because I, I don't know, I was like, I'm not, I'm not gonna risk it. And I thought that was gonna be the end of that story. Little did I know, um, since I, I don't know if it's because I've had it for so long, but it grew with my stomach and it actually, I think, gauged itself. Like, you know, like seeing kids when they have like the big gauges and then the hole gets bigger and bigger and bigger. That was my belly button piercing and light gauges. I don't know if you've ever dated anyone or had gauges yourself, but um, they smell of dead skin. As it's being stretched, dead skin is sloughing off, it's getting trapped and same thing happens with a belly button piercing. Again, I don't know if this is everybody or if it's just people who have very old belly button piercing. <laughs> and the side effect of that was once my belly shrunk back down and the gauge kind of shriveled up, there was a bunch of dead skin that smelled like dead skin <laughs> trapped in that hole. Somebody DM'd me warning me about this, but <laughs> you have to like literally pinch the piercing hole and the dead skin will shoot out like a pimple and it is <gasps> Horrific. Number three, and I feel like this is quite common, but I really didn't know anything about it before I was pregnant, but diastasis recti. I might be butchering it, I might not be. I don't 100% know if I have this or not. This is a condition where when you're pregnant, your abs separate and they naturally slowly come back together postpartum but not always, and that is called diastasis recti. There are a few ways to tell, but if you kind of lift yourself up, do a crunch, activate your abs, they kind of come in to a peak instead of flat because they aren't connected. You can also develop a like loose mom pouch because the muscles are weakened, and I kind of have both of these situations going on. I don't know if I 100% have this or not, this is something I'm bringing up at my next appointment next week. She's gonna have a lot to hear from me. <laughs> Number four, uneven boobs. This is something that happened to me 
later in my postpartum, probably in the past like month. And I'm putting this in here as a warning because I feel like you can slightly prevent it, not always, and uneven boobs, a lot of people are born with them, they're natural, they're beautiful, nothing wrong with it. But in my case, I think it would have been preventable. I just had an oversupply side and an undersupply side, and I just kind of favored my oversupply side. I didn't try to even them out, I just went really hard on that one side. And what happens with that is your body listens and it keeps producing more, on that one side and I thought well once I'm done producing milk they're gonna go back and even out it'll be okay I have now started producing so much uneven milk that this side has honestly stretched out just from being so full and then emptied and so full and this side just kind of chilling I wish I could just you directly you not like the creepy person who's trying to see my nips but like friend to friend show you the situation because if you look like this you're like they look super normal they are not girl but I do suggest you taking my advice and just just trying to even them out as best as you can because your body will listen to you number five postpartum hair loss I for many months thought I didn't have it and I was like oh I'll be good no it just took like four or five months to hit me. My hair did get super thick during pregnancy, so I feel like it doesn't look that thin right now, but right at my hairline is where I'm seeing a lot of loss. And so when you're postpartum, you just lose those hormones and you go through like a schluffing process. Is schluffing a word? It should be. Number six, postpartum BO. I feel like I could have hid this one because you guys aren't smelling me. We don't have smell vision but I was talking to someone else postpartum about this and she was like, my deodorant stopped working. And I'm like, no, it didn't. It's just, it's just postpartum BO. You can try your best to avoid it, but your body is trying to overproduce your scent for your baby to know that you are there and know who you are. So it's kind of a beautiful thing, but it is also not beautiful. Number seven, postpartum night sweats and hot flashes. I definitely got the night sweats in the beginning. They were significantly severe and I've talked to other moms postpartum and they went through the same thing and I thought I was just alone and going through um, a mental breakdown. I've since looked it up because <laughs> I was concerned and it's very normal. Your body is going through a big hormonal change. I feel like I never know what temperature the room is anymore because of this. And now I always check my baby camera that says the room temperature because I don't know how to dress arrow because I'm like, I don't know if it's like a thousand degrees or negative two. Number eight, and I'm throwing this one in. It's kind of boring, but I'm just like concerned at this point. I really hope this is like a postpartum thing and I'm not getting arthritis or something. But ever since I was pregnant, I started to get foot pain when I'd wake up in the morning. Like it's, or if I'm sitting down for too long. Anytime like I'm stagnant and then I put pressure on my feet, I feel like my foot have been like in this position and then like I'm trying to walk like this but now I'm almost half a year postpartum and every morning it's like my feet are they look normal right they're not clenched but they just feel like solid rocks being just ah. number nine one big thing during pregnancy you get with all the hormones is discoloration, skin darkening. This is definitely something out of the entire list that I have talked about before, but I'm gonna put it in here again because I still have my Linea Negra. I was comparing the line to my last video, I think it was two months postpartum, and I forgot how much darker it was, so it definitely has faded. I have been doing some things to fade it. I don't wanna do a spoiler alert, because video coming soon on all that stuff. But yeah, some, th some things have been happening. Number 10, and this is probably the most significant visual change my body has went through after pregnancy. A stretched out skin. I feel like when people talk about after pregnancy, stretch marks normally take the light, the forefront, but nobody talks about stretched out skin. So I'm here to shine a light that it does happen and it is normal. And I do see some differences in the past few months. I don't know if much is going to change with it. I really just don't see 
how it would become unstretched. And for me personally, it is just really probably like the two inches above my belly button. I don't know why I stretched so much there. And to be totally honest with you, I definitely have had moments out of everything where like this subject, I'm just like, <sighs> kind of sucks. And when it comes down to it, I am only human, you are only human, we all have days where we feel blessed, where we have one or two negative thoughts about ourselves, but it's just really identifying those, realizing that we're not gonna let it ruin our day, ruin our life, or ruin the fact that our bodies are pretty freaking cool, pregnant or not, just getting up every single day, your body thinking, processing, creating. Go easy on yourself, give yourself a break, you're doing great. That's all for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a like. Let me know in the comments down below what you would like to see next, and I'll see you guys next Monday. Bye! I was never the one to write up a song for just anyone I, I was always the one to find myself lost in all conversations Oh, cause I've always been told that things will